so it's hard to know this, but you would have a better indication of where Deshaun is at based on how much he's practicing. Is he running with the first team? Is he just doing stuff on the side? As an ind in the individual, yeah, the individual drill. stuff, yeah, to speed. yeah. Like I don't know, and, and all that is classified as practice and limited practice. Mm. I don't know if he's actually running plays. Yeah, it doesn't seem like yeah, it. Yeah, like I don't know if he's out there seven on seven. Red, and today would have been a red zone day, seven on seven. Today is the day you you tighten up everything. You know, Friday is the shortest practice of the week. You're tightening up everything, you know. And you usually, at least under Andy, this is where he would gauge right. whether or not you were playing. Now, Andy used to have the rule where... Listen, uh, Friday, about two more days before the game, I really usually have my um, game prediction video out before this. But um, I really had to wait for some information. Uh, number one, I had to get a better understanding of Baltimore, you know, what they like to do, the type of stuff they like to run, how the matchup would be. And um, I was waiting to hear about Deshaun Jackson in particular and possibly Alshon Jeffrey, um, you know, the injury report, so that I could better gauge, you know, what, what we would do. Well, it appears Deshaun is going to be out again. Okay, so now this is what I believe the fourth game. Uh, he's he's been out. Alshon uh, was never put on the pup list or or IR because uh, they thought there was a chance he'd play in September, right? So now we're talking about week six and he's still out. So I don't know what's up with with that or what's up with either one of them. But I will tell you this, like, it doesn't look good um, for them. You know, um, yes, it's a long season. Um, we are, like, really just a half game out of first place. So I guess I get where there may be the thinking on the part of the organization where there's no real need to rush, rush them right now. Uh, Dallas isn't really scaring you. Uh, and really the first focus is to win the division. I get it. Uh, my concern, however, is with the uh, uh, the ability for uh, the offense to gain some sort of continuity. At some point, you know, the plan is to be on a roll by the playoffs. So we're talking about like week 10, week 11. You need to really be on a roll. And you need to have also won enough games to win the playoffs, which is the second problem. Uh, but at some point, you're going to have to figure out, okay, who are we going with? Who are our guys? And try to build some continuity with those guys, whoever they may be. Um, of course, I would love continuity. That includes Deshaun Jackson, Dallas Goddard, Alshon Jeffrey, and now, you know, we can use uh, Greg Ward and, and Travis Fogum. I don't give a damn about Ortega Whiteside right now. You know, he's not showing me enough to care. All right. But Deshaun being out again, again, it's just not good. And right now, um, man, they're making me look bad as far as um, my opinion on the, on the, on the issue. Because, like, I'm typically not as hard on athletes when it comes to injuries as some people might be um i i i i get it i i see them as just not their fault uh, unless they went out and did something that led to the injury like you know really off the field football is violent injuries happen right but even with that this right here is is absolutely utterly ridiculous right we have injured players all over the place um, now, some of the injured guys, like Elaine Johnson, he tries to play. Um, so you have that contrasted with, say, Deshaun Jackson, who is just like taking off week after week after week after week for a hamstring, you know, which I'm not understanding. I don't know what's up with this dude, man. I'm starting to think maybe, starting to, starting to uh, wonder, does he care? You know, like, you, you, you see some of these opinions coming out there about, you know, these guys don't care. And I never really endorse or believe that stuff because why wouldn't you care, you know? You're playing a sport. Uh, you're making millions of dollars. 
you uh, it's your contract is usually incentive laden so the more you play the better you perform uh, you know the better the more money you get there's also legacy on the line like if Deshaun Jackson plays like you go down as a better player eagle guy of course he's not on a hall of fame path or anything trajectory but still you know you're known as a better player and i think i tend to believe every player deep down wants to be known as a great but now i'm starting to question all of that i don't know what the freak is going on with with with, with this right here a hamstring is taking you that long now what i don't know and i don't speak on is whether or not it's doug peterson saying, you know what, we might be able to find a way to win this game. Why he would think that, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, Deshaun's out. So what does this mean for the game? How do I see the game? I say this. I feel a little better about this game against Baltimore than I do about the game against Pittsburgh. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Number one, we're at home. We're at home. Though it's not going to be like a sellout, of course, because of this, this Ubaka crap that's going on. Uh, we're allowed to have about, I believe, close to 6,000 fans. So 6,000 fans will be out there. That That's better than nothing. But listening to Carson Wentz, it's still like some sort of a motivation, you know, uh, that you have an audience like, mentally for the players so that that may play into it um now is the home advantage what it would normally be absolutely not um it isn't like lamar jackson won't be able to hear the plays uh, like normally uh when it's loud from a full stadium it isn't like uh baltimore that they travel a long distance they can just come just the night before uh we we have the same eastern standard time so you're not dealing with a team whose body might be uh, set at a different time, whose biological clocks, no. So I don't think that they, the, the home field is that much of an advantage, but it's always some bit of an advantage, always. Uh, so there's that. Number two, I've, I'm encouraged by what I've seen from our offense, what we were able to do against the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, which is a defense that's that's pretty good. You know, they they're pretty them in Baltimore pretty much on par, the same same level of effective defense. Uh, that's just a, a nice defense division. They're just a physical division at AFC East. So uh but Ben Roethlisberger, believe it or not, scares me more than Lamar Jackson. I'm gonna say that again. Ben Roethlisberger, that type of quarterback, actually scares me more than Lamar Jackson. Why? Um, my concern is really the back seven and their ability to stop great wide receivers, great tight ends. Now, what does bother me is uh, Baltimore's tight end. I think that is a mismatch. Similar to the mismatch we had against San Francisco. <clears throat> Though this guy is not as good as uh, the, the, the San Francisco tight end. He is pretty good. He's, he's a top tight end in, in, in the league numbers wise. And Lamar Jackson likes to target him a lot. So that is a bit of a concern. However, the other wide receivers don't really scare me. Like with a Ben Roethlisberger and his wideouts. Ben Roethlisberger is just a much better passer of the football than Lamar Jackson is at this point in this stage in his career and possibly what forever. Maybe maybe Lamar will never be the passer of Ben uh, Roethlisberger is. Lamar doesn't have the um, the veteran quarterback acumen that a Ben Roethlisberger has. He hasn't recognized, he hasn't seen as many defenses. He hasn't deciphered as many uh, disguises of blitzes and all of those different things 
that a uh, a quarterback like Ben Roethlisberger has. Pretty much whatever you throw at Ben Roethlisberger, he's seen it at some point in his career. He knows how to counter it, and that was evident in the way uh, he was able to get that victory for them last week. With Lamar, I don't see that. With Lamar, you're dealing with probably the best athlete at quarterback since Mike Vick, um, and that's pretty much what you're going to going to deal with. I don't believe our defense will be completely barbecued by a guy like him. I don't think he's going to run 450 yards or anything like that. Uh, hopefully, you can put together some plan that may include some must rushing, must rushing, maybe some spying, and, and different things like that, which could help. I wish they would play their young rookie, Davion Taylor, because of his speed and athleticism. I think that would be a good matchup. Um, for him to go up against uh, Lamar Jackson, though I don't know how good he is at shedding offensive line blocks and that sort of thing. So I'm not going to go on and crazy with it. I'm just trying to brainstorm maybe some strategies that could be effective. Um, So I feel, like I said, I feel better about this game. However, with the injuries to Deshaun Jackson not changing, that status changing, um, coupled with... Ashawn Jeffrey not changing. Though I'm encouraged by uh, Travis Fogum, um, I'm expecting the um, the Ravens to put more attention on him than the Steelers did. Right, the Steelers knew nothing about this kid. So now the Ravens are dealing with him. They're going to watch that film, and they're going to come up with ways to try to take him away since he appears to be tar- Ars, um, uh, Carson's favorite target last week. So what may happen, though, is Zach Ertz might, might wake up, and I think that's our pretty much one chance to win this game. Or another thing. Uh, Doug Peterson could lean on Miles Sanders, which is what I really want. However, Doug Peterson has not been doing that, and this is disappointing me greatly. I believe the key to victory would be to lean on Miles Sanders, run game, passing game, and then once that's established in their minds and 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 is and is a success, then you go more so to. Um, uh, Zach Ertz, Fogum, the other wideouts. Okay, um, so what I see happening is a very closely, tightly contested game, and um, due to our lack of explosiveness on offense and Doug's unwillingness to utilize Miles Sanders, making it a Miles Sanders-centric offense, I have to uh, pick another loss for us this week. Um, I think Baltimore wins it close. By no, but we cover. It won't be like more than seven points. Um, however, um, like I said, we will still win the division. I believe. I don't. I'm not afraid of Dallas. Uh, Andy Dalton can go in there and play. However, I don't see how he can play better than Dak Prescott. The problem is that I don't see Dallas's defense getting any better. So the division will still be there, uh, regardless what happens this week. Um, I have to pick a score since that's what I normally do. So I'm going to go. Um, twenty-seven, twenty-three, or twenty-seven, twenty-four, Baltimore. All right. So that's my that's that's my pick, and we'll see. All right. So two after the game. I'm out.